Hi there guys, welcome back to another video. So, I've been thinking for a long time about picking up an airbrush. I didn't want to jump in at an expensive entry level or anything like that, and so I've constantly, constantly held back. And recently I've watched a few YouTube videos looking at the cheapest airbrush plus compressor on Amazon and all these kind of things. And I had decided that I was gonna jump in next year. But lucky me, Mrs. Foy jumped in and got me one for Christmas. So this is the KK Moon dual action airbrush with compressor. Um, I have had a look in here previously. It's all pretty basic. This one's 52 quid on Amazon. So it's not the cheapest one you can get, but it is pretty, pretty low down there. Um, so I've seen on other reviews seen this compressor I've seen this on a few I know that that goes on there to hold our airbrush Um, I don't know what this thing is hang on a minute right that goes on there I don't know what it is Um, it came with the box the, the, I think the the important thing about this box is it's not branded or anything like that so I'm assuming that this and this and this and it's, uh, they're probably assembled from a whole host of different companies and that kind of thing. So I'm pretty sure that they won't be producing the whole lot. 25 PSI. Okay. So we've got this. Let's hook it up. That goes on the end there. So if you haven't worked out already, I've never used an airbrush before. I thought it'd just be good to sort of chart my first uses. Um, I did read some of this before. So this is just a gauge um, for airflow from zero PSI to 25. There's no kind of gauge on there to show you what it is, but in a little bit of research, I've seen that most people go for around about 20 to 30 PSI. So I'm gonna leave it up at max for now, but then we'll play with that in a minute when we do some actual airbrushing. Um, the airbrush itself. So, nothing else that I do know is that it's a dual action. That means that when you spray, you push it down, I believe, to, yeah, you push it down for the airflow. cup doesn't come off it's welded part of that um let's get cracking with this okay um so that's for a different type of air valve so we don't need that so that's coming off hmm Let's plug it in and see what we've got. So one thing I will say before I go on is that I've seen a few videos saying, if you just get this stuff, you're ready to go. Get cracking with your airbrushing experience, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's not true. So you're gonna have to get, and again, <laughs> I'm saying this like I know what I'm talking about. But you'll need some airbrush cleaner. This is 200 mil, it's about nine quid from Amazon. Now, airbrush thinner and airbrush flow improver. So what the flow improver does is delay the drying time on the needle apparently, and the thinner obviously just thins it to, to let it go through. Now, these again were about nine quid each on Amazon as well. So it's not a case of get yourself the cheapest airbrush you can find and you can just get cracking with it because you, you'll just You'll just screw it up unless you start using the other products that go with it. I also bought some primer, some Vallejo primer. So all, all this is Vallejo products. And I went with those because um, on all, all the reviews of other airbrushes and that kind of things that I've seen, this is what everyone uses. Well, this is what most people use. So anyway, let's stop going on about that. Let's start testing this out. So I've got a 
bone splitter here. So let's prime him up to start with and then we'll, I don't know, we'll put some zenithals on and that kind of thing. Right. So it's not massively noisy. Okay, yep, yeah, so feel that. I don't know if you can hear that. But as, the, as I switch the air valve up and down, you can see that it's obviously decreasing the PSI. Right, okay. So let's go for some primer. Now, what it says on the thinner and the flow improver is that I should use two drops per 10 drops of paint. So I am gonna try that with the primer. So let's get 10 drops in here. One, two. Two drops of flow improver, two drops of thinner. We've got a sacrificial brush here. Give it all a mix with. Okay, right, let's see what we've got. So the more I pull back, the more paint comes out. And the further away I get, the bigger the spray, and obviously the closer I get. Oh, I don't know what happened now. The closer I get, the smaller it gets. Okay, so, I don't know, so far so good. I noticed that this is a cheap airbrush, so I notice what I'm not getting is the, the sort of pencil thin lines. Right, okay. So let's prime this guy here. Um, so I have to say I'm really impressed at how <laughs> how straightforward that was to be honest. Okay, so so there you go. That's fair enough. So that primed that model in seconds, really. So uh, let's prime a few more. So from my first kind of batch priming experience, the main thing I learned was that I was holding the airbrush too close to the model, which was obviously transferring a lot more paint over, which meant that it was taking ages to dry. Plus perhaps making that initial priming layer a little bit too thick or, or more thick than I would like. The other thing I got wrong was that I was pulling the trigger back too far, so I was releasing far too much paint, so that increased the drying time as well as wasted a bit of paint as well. So I think given a little bit more practice, I'll probably be able to prime a model within 30 seconds or so, as well as it drying within a couple of minutes. So what you can see here is I'm priming some orcs, so that's bone splitters and iron jaws, and I've got a Nighthawk model that I'm going to do as well. So for all of the orcs, I'm going to add a Zenithal highlight, and then for the Nighthawk model, I'm gonna start doing the painting as described in the Mortal Realms magazines. I then followed that up by cleaning the airbrush. So what I did was I just followed the instructions on the airbrush cleaner, which was to do a 50-50 mix of water and clean it in the cup and then spray it through the nozzle. 
Before doing that, I just filled that cup with water and then give it a bit of an, a mix up with my brush and then empty that into my water pot. I then had the bright idea of trying to use the airbrush to dry out the model or dry that priming layer. It didn't work, all it did was start to push that paint around and make it look a bit rubbish. So I won't be doing that again. Right, so that took a while to dry and I think that's more than anything me holding the airbrush too close to the model so it's pulled up a bit more paint than it usually would. But it's left a good finish, I'm quite happy with it. So I'm gonna apply a Zenithal highlight. So I'm gonna start with Mechanicus Standard Grey and then I'm gonna follow up with Corax White. What I'm gonna do is for the Nighthaunt model, I'm gonna do that fully in Corax White and then I'm gonna hit that up with Nilac Oxide afterwards. Then that sort of is the start of the process of painting with the Mortal Realms magazines. So you'll see that I didn't show you the primed models there or a good close up look. The reason is because it's just primed the black, you wouldn't be able to see much on it. So we'll have a better look at it when we've added some of the Zenithal highlighting. Now something that I did notice about the Mechanica Standard Grey is that it didn't seem to flow as well as the primer did. And I'm assuming that's because the primer is a dedicated airbrush product, whereas Mechanica Standard Grey isn't, even though I added the flow improver and the thinner. Something I've noticed actually is that if you accidentally pull this back and then push air through, you need to do it away from the model because it gives you gives this kind of quick burst of paint without you pulling the trigger back again. So if you sort of pull that back, let it release some of that paint. When you press the trigger next time, whether you're pulling back to release paint or not, you'll still get a load come out. Right, we'll give that a little while to dry and then we'll do the tops with Corax White uh, and we'll do this model fully in Corax White. So in fact, if we take a look back to the first one we did. So you can see the Xenothor has worked, but it's not very well defined because um, because Mechanica Standard Grey is quite dark, but we're not done yet. So we're gonna do that final spray from the top with Corax White. And then we'll see how it all looks. Okay, so let's go ahead with the Corax White. So the Corax White did go on much smoother. It just seemed to be a much better flow through the airbrush and it just seemed to cover a little bit better. That might partially be because spraying Mechanica Standard Grey onto black, you've got a dark color going on, so already very dark color, so maybe you don't see it as well but it just seemed much easier to do it this time and it felt like I had much more control over the airbrush than I did with the Mechanica Standard Grey. I also felt like I had a lot more control over this than I would a rattle can. So I Zenithal highlight all of my models with rattle cans pre prior to this, but going forward, I feel like this is a much better way of doing it. You've got much more control. I also feel like this is a big money saver as well. So I go through quite a few rattle cans, but I feel like it would take an absolute age for me to get through this kind of 200 mil bottle of Vallejo primer. Plus the fact that if I buy other primers, so Vallejo also do a 200 mil white and I think a few other colors, you know, if I can add my priming layers with that, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than just using my standard Citadel paints. So the Zenithals are, I'm fairly happy with. So let's have a look at those. And it's kind of, it's, I've managed to target the areas that I wanted to hit and keep recess the areas that I didn't. So, and with, with much more control than I would with a usual kind of rattle can spray. So I am happy with it. And um, I had noticed that by staying sort of further away uh, when, when airbrushing, airbrushing particularly that kind of last highlight, that the paint dried almost instantly. Um, the paint was dry within seconds really, as opposed to those sort of more concentrated hits for the priming. So even when I'm priming in the future, I'll probably keep that bit of distance away just to assist with the drying times. But yeah, I'm happy. Um, let's 
So yeah, all in all, pretty good. So what I've done as well is I've done a real kind of coat of Corax white directly onto this Nighthaunt model. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try, I don't know how it's gonna work out, but I'm gonna try and put some, put some nylac oxide through the airbrush to, see, to give it a coat once this is dried. Just see how it comes out. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea to put technical paints through the airbrush, but you know, let's give it a go. So with the nylac oxide, obviously this is a lot more runny than standard paint. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna skip the thinner but I am going to add a little touch of flow aid, sorry, flow improver. I've got a few models here, actually a few Nighthawk models. I have to say, I'm really pleased at how this is going on. Okay, so for the last one so i'll show you the first two i did um which i'm really really pleased with to be fair it went on just really really quickly oh, you can see where i've missed a bit there but yeah it went on really quickly nice kind of flat coat so yeah, it went on great. So that is the first one. Um, the second one. Might be a few areas I can see actually where I've missed it. But I have to say that's that's more to do with me rushing than anything else. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased. Now, what you will see as well is what happens when you don't allow it to dry properly. So on this one where I didn't allow it to dry properly, it sort of made a real kind of a, a mess where the nine o'clock size wouldn't adhere to the wet paint. Um, so all I'll do with this is I'll just wait for it all to dry. Then I'll go back with the nylac oxide and fix it. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased to be fair uh, where we are so far. I'm just wondering if there's anything else I can do. Okay, so kind of a failed video that I was gonna do um, was kind of creating some trash terrain. So my terrain creating skills need a little bit of improvement. Um, so I actually built this out of an old, <laughs> a, a Lynx box. Got a Lynx, got two Lynx box sets for Christmas. I'm gonna try and turn them into some terrain for a video. It didn't really work out at all the way I wanted it to, but let's see if out of this we can't kind of get something. So all I'm going to do is some of the metal areas here, I'm just going to apply some lead belcher through the airbrush. Okay, so that gave me um, as good a result as I probably could have hoped for had I painted it on by hand. So yeah, pretty good. Bit inconsistent in color on the top there. That's just because of the way I brushed it on because I want to make it weathered when I'm done. But yeah, so that's my first experience with an airbrush. And I have to say, I'm really impressed. Um, so again, it's not, you know, it's, it's 52 quid. So it's not like, you know, we can't all just be chucking about 52 quid like it's nothing. But if you're thinking about starting out, and you want to get something you can actually use because I know that I'm going to use this. I'm just sort of taking it apart a little bit to look to see what needs to be cleaned up. And actually, I can see I've taken the second part of the nozzle off. It's all sorts of stuff collected there, and it's all film from all the different paints that I've used. It's a little bit of each in there, especially a bit of that lead belcher at the end. So, need to take this apart and clean it at the end of each use. Um, so again, this is just going on videos that I've seen in the past. I've got nothing to kind of pull on for 
particular experience. But the main things are to wash out the actual cup as much as you can. To take a few parts out, particularly this pin which runs right through the center of the entire thing. And I can see already, just from the end there, that that has got some paint on it. Right, so that's a couple of parts there. So I've got the two nozzle parts at the front, and I've got the pin. I've got the back section, which keeps the trigger in. Now, none of that is actually in contact with any paint or anything like that, so I'm not gonna paint that. So I'm not gonna um, clean that. Just got some kitchen towel here. Up a bit on. And clean this pin first. That, that cleans up, that's actually cleaned up very quickly and very nicely actually. Then I'll just give these end parts a bit of a wipe up with it as well. Something else that I read about, which is to use interdental toothbrush or interdental brushes, just to give that the inside of that nozzle a bit of a clean out as well. Okay, then I'll put it all back together. Now, so I'll say again, it's my first time messing around with an airbrush. I'm really impressed. Um, I think for the price that it is, there you go, there's my first, there's my first airbrush injury there. Right on the point of that needle, which you can't see there. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, and I won't be going back. So what I will do is I will, as I learn more stuff, if this video does well and people like it, as I learn more stuff on the airbrush in these sort of early days, I'll come back and do another report. So things like my Mortal Realm subscribers, if you're sat on a ton of Nighthorn that you haven't started painting yet, you'll be able to get a few stages out of the way in a matter of hours. But I have to say, this early stage, I'm really happy. Again, here's that one that I didn't wait to dry. So it's come on with like a really inconsistent coat. I'll actually see what happens when that dries because that might actually turn out to be quite a nice effect actually um but yeah anyway so that's good let's have a look at the orcs that i primed and highlighted or sorry zenithal highlighted could have done better than that last one but yeah i'm pretty happy i'm very happy so there's a link in the description. If you want to buy this from Amazon, you can. Um, like I say, it was 52 quid. I didn't go for the cheapest option. It was one there about 30 odd quid, but I have, you know, when I was looking at the reviews and that kind of thing, um, I told my wife to get this one. It's just a little bit, just a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it. And then our lead belchered bit of crappy terrain. But there you go guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe and I'll do more of them. I'll be back with more hobby-esque reviews. So I'll be looking at this Amazon electric foam cutting tool set, which I tried out today and it's actually really, really good. Does everything that I wanted it to do. 
And I'll also be back very soon with another issue of Mortal Realms, which does include this dude here. So thanks for watching, guys. Much appreciated. I'll catch you later.